In this video, we'll be looking at how you can run any Bifrost graph with the Flow Graph Engine API. The Flow Graph Engine API provides a way for you to run a Bifrost graph and create cache files for complex simulations in the cloud outside of Maya. This means you can continue to use Maya without waiting for it to create the cache files. In this video, we'll look at how you can take a Bifrost graph from Maya and export it to a JSON file then run it in the cloud with the Flow Graph Engine API. Previously, we looked at how to run the tree sample for the Flow Graph Engine API, along with all the setup you'll need for running it in Windows. The tree sample provides an excellent base for running any Bifrost graph, so we'll start with the sample and adjust it for a different graph. Before we get started, download the tree sample from GitHub if you haven't done so already, and unzip the folder. Make a copy of your tree sample folder and rename it for easy finding later. We're going to be running our favorite sample, Arrow Colors, so I'm going to name the new folder for that. We'll start by exporting a JSON file that represents a Bifrost graph in Maya. To start, let's open up Maya and go to Windows, Bifrost Browser, then Smoke, and double-click to open Arrow Colors. This is a sample of a simulation of colorful smoke, which you can see if you pull the time slider forward. But if you pull the time slider backward, the simulation doesn't run backward. If we want to be able to scrub through it backward and forward, we're going to need to create cache files for it. We can create the cache files with flow wedging, which we can run right from Maya. Starting a flow wedging job also provides a convenient and fast way to export the Bifrost graph to a JSON file formatted to run with the Flow Graph Engine API. We'll first set up the graph for flow wedging, then start a flow wedging job, and then use the JSON file created by that process for the Flow Graph Engine API. To set up the graph for flow wedging, let's first make sure the number of frames is set to 10 to keep things manageable. Then, in the Bifrost graph, we need to add a couple of nodes. The first is a build array node, right here before the output, which is required to make flow wedging work with the graph. Even though we're only running one simulation, Bifrost needs us to set up an array with that single simulation in it. The second is a wedging node, which runs output to these two other nodes. In the end, this part of the graph should look like this. Now we're ready to start the flow wedging process. Go ahead and start the job. You might get an error message when you start the flow wedging job, but it doesn't matter. The JSON file that represents the Bifrost graph has been created anyway. Before you go on, save this scene as a Maya scene. To find the JSON file, Navigate to your C drive to Username, App Data, Local, Temp, and then do a search on BIF. You'll find the JSON file that represents the Arrow Colors Bifrost graph in a folder named BIF underscore submit underscore some characters. There will also be a JSON file called API Payload. Keep that folder open, then navigate to the folder for the Arrow sample that you copied earlier and find the Input Data folder. Copy the two JSON files, Arrow Colors and API Payload, from the BIF Submit folder to the Input Data folder. The next step is to make alterations to the tree sample you copied earlier to make it run with the Arrow Colors graph. Let's start by going to the New Sample folder and changing the name of the Python file FGE Add Trees. Let's rename it to FGE Arrow Colors. Now, let's open that file to take a look at it. I'm using VS Code to look at these files, but you can use any code editor. Next, we're going to take a closer look at this section labeled Submit Job. If you also open the API Payload JSON file, you'll see that it resembles this Submit Job section in the FGE Arrow Colors Python file, with 
sections for name and tags and tasks and so on. Note that the output for this code is a series of BOB files. BOB stands for Bifrost Object Binary. These are the files that hold frame-by-frame -frame cache data. Let's start by replacing this Submit Job section in the Python file with the code from the API Payload JSON file. You might need to do a little housekeeping, like tabbing things over to keep things tidy. We also need to change this Upload section here to point to our Arrow Colors JSON file. And be sure to comment out any mentions of USD files, since those don't pertain here. Note the Bifrost Graph Earn variable, because you'll need it for the source. Let's also change the Definition File section to set the source to URI colon Bifrost Graph Earn. We also need to search for all mentions of flow wedging and delete those parts of the file names. We're going to call this job New Scene instead. Some other parameters to change are these true and false values. While the JSON file spells these values as lowercase, Python needs to have the first letter capitalized to run correctly. And lastly, save the FGE arrow colors Python script. With these changes, we're ready to give it a go and run the Flow Graph Engine API with the new JSON file. Go to the folder where the Python script lives and replace the folder address with CMD to open the command line window. And here is where you'll run the Python script. The first thing you'll need to do is set your client ID and secret. If you created a batch file, just go ahead and run it here. To run the Python script, it's pretty simple. Just Python, then the name of our Python file. It takes a few minutes since the arrow color simulation is kind of computationally heavy, but just imagine if you had a very complex Bifrost graph with far more than 10 frames, and if you ran it from within Maya with flow wedging, you'd be waiting quite a while to get those cache files. By running the Bifrost graph with the Flow Graph Engine API, you can be doing something else while this is running, like continuing to use Maya to work on your project. Once the API finishes, we can now load those BOB cache files into Maya and look at our simulation. The first step is to take note of where the BOB files went. They should be in the Outputs folder, and there should be 10 of them, one for each frame. To get ready for the next step, select any one of the BOB files and right-click and choose Copy as Path. Next. Let's open Maya and open the scene we saved earlier, the one with the Bifrost graph and flow wedging. Select the volume that houses the simulation and expand the Extra Attributes section. For the Job Ports Wedge file name, paste in the path you just copied and replace any number with hash signs. This will pull all the BOB files in as cached frames. Now you can scrub back and forth on the timeline and see the smoke growing and changing no matter which frame you're on or whether you're going forward or backward. This process shows you how you can use any Bifrost graph with the Flow Graph Engine API. Just imagine what you could do with the ability to create cache files for any Bifrost graph and have it all run in the cloud while you keep creating in Maya.